Uh, in accordance with the Virginia Beach City Code 2-21 and by authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Virginia Beach, I hereby call for a special session of the Virginia Beach City Council, Tuesday, August 10th, 2021, 2 o'clock p.m., City Council Chambers, Building 1, City Hall, 2nd Floor, 2401 Courthouse Drive. The purpose of this special section is to allow City Council to conduct public interviews for the short list of candidates to fill the vacant Kempsville District seat. Immediately following, City Council will recess into and convene into a closed session for the following purposes as permitted by cited sections of Virginia Beach Code. 2.2-37A1, discussion of candidates for appointment to fill the Kempsville District seat. Um, uh, next is 2.237A29, um, discussion of the award of public contract for the dome site Atlantic Park uh, Development, Pembroke TIF SSD. And 2.2-37A5, discussion of the acquisition or disposition of real property in the Beach District. All at the conclusion of the closed session, City Council will convene into open session to certify the closed session, then continue the regularly scheduled City Council workshop. Okay, so at this point, uh, Madam Clerk, the roll call. Um, all present, excluding Ms. Wilson, uh, Councilmember Wilson, who I assume will be here in just a bit, and the Councilmember Rouse is out of town. Okay, thank you very much. She's on her way. Okay. Thank you. But at this point, uh, let's go ahead and proceed, and we're going to ask uh, each uh, Yo, know, candidate, we want to thank you all for your participation. Uh, come on up and uh, take 10 minutes to introduce yourself. Uh, first, number one, Mike Anderson. How you doing, Mike? Uh, it brings back memories of being in school, uh, having the last name of Anderson, being, you know, having my my essay ready for the next day for the teacher. I guess it's better it's than Dan Kowski, be right? So. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wood, and City Council members. My name is Mike Anderson, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to interview for the open seat that Jessica Abbott held for four and a half years. Just a little background on myself. I am a Richmond native, area native. This is where I met my beautiful wife of 35 years, um, Dawn, and we moved to Virginia Beach back in 1986. Uh, she is a, a native of Virginia Beach, went to Princess Anne High School, so we came back here to be close to her parents. My early years of community service consisted of being a member of the Rotary Club, downtown Rotary Club in Norfolk, uh, where I worked at the time. I then got more involved when I started coaching our son's baseball team at Kempsville Pony Baseball, and eventually became a board member and a future president of, of the league. During the time of which I was working with the city on the future move of KPB to its new location uh, for the new Princess Anne widening project. Not knowing at the time that I would become a member of the historic Kempsville CAC later on, with which ha we have been heavily involved with the transformation of the historic area with the city. My family and I have lived in Larkspur uh, in Kempsville for over 28 years and have been a member, I have been a member of the Civic League for around 10 years and past president. There are more civic boards that I can mention, but with the time constraints, I can say they all were important to my growth into, into community service. I was honored to be appointed in 2016 to the Beach and Water, Beaches and Waterways Commission by uh, Councilwoman Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond at the time back in 2016. And then more recently was honored as well when Councilwoman Jessica Abbott appointed me to the Community Services Board, which I have only been on for about a month and a half. <coughs> back in 2019, I was also asked by Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond if I was interested in joining the board of the Virginia African American Culture Center to, to help out on the board. I, of course, uh, accepted, and it's been an experience working with them. Uh, I did uh, 
resigned from that board when I got appointed to the Community Services Board to try to uh, focus on that. Still involved with the, uh, the board with the uh, fall festival that they put together every year. Our, our daughter, Abby, uh, mm -hmm. is, has been a teacher for the City of Virginia Beach going on eight years now and is a special ed teacher in the elementary school program. That gives me more purpose to make sure that the educators of Virginia Beach are getting the proper resources to do their job correctly. This brings me full circle to why I am here in front of you explaining why I would be honored to represent my neighbors, friends, and all of residents of Kempsville. It would also be an honor to serve beside all of you to move Virginia Beach to be even a better place to live and work. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do we, are we doing uh, there are questions? Yes, Mr. Mr. Moss. I have a few questions, and I did provide my question to advance yes, to sir, all the did. candidates so they would be ready. I have them I, right here. I had the good privilege of having Jessica as my sidekick here for the last four and a half years, and it was a real privilege. Uh, the questions I have are, 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 time, are timeless in some respects. But one, what is your thoughts? The actual question I wrote, I wrote, I won't read it over and over for time purposes, so other candidates got them in them also, but I will be asking them these questions. If appointed to the Kentsville seat, as former council member Jessica Abbott's relief, would you continue to support and vote to continue the appeal of the Norfolk Federal District Court Raymond Jackson's ruling on the Federal Voting Rights Act of 1965 as amended? As I've researched it, yes, I will. My at this time. All right, thank you. I appreciate your quick answers. I like those. Question two. If appointed to the Kentsville District seat as the former council member Jessica Abbott's relief, will you honor and enforce without reservation or qualification the voters' decision in 2016 advisory referendum on light rail of the voters not to extend light rail into Virginia Beach until such time as another referendum is held and the voters reverse their position? Yes, sir, I will. And last one, question is, if appointed to the Kentsville District seat as the former council member to relieve her, would you repeatedly vote to preclude the commercial development and express your support of the informal policy direction to preclude commercial development and communicate that publicly of the 10 acres publicly held, proper, commonly known as Rudy Loop? Uh, actually, no, I cannot. I feel that the, uh, the amount of land there, we can uh, have both green space and development and, and make it a nice piece of property. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Ms. Fenley. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I look forward to working with you on the Community Services Board, oh, yeah. whether you That's get here right, since yeah. I'm now going to be the liaison. Yes, uh, very much involved. I, I'm very much looking forward to becoming more involved with Have those issues. I wondered if there was some aspect of the uh, mental health uh, community services board that you particularly feel uh, concerned about that led to your interest in being appointed there. Honestly, um, when I was speaking with Jessica, um, we were looking at all of the open spots. I wanted to stay involved since I did, you know, run um, temporarily run for city council against her and got out at the, uh, in September uh, because of the pandemic issues of, of campaigning. Felt it was better to um, um, support her in, in that endeavor. And she gave me a couple of uh, open spots and, and community service board struck an interest, um, not on the, the, the mental side, but, you know, cause I'm, my family has a lot of medical uh, background. I don't, but I, I feel I can help with grassroots and, and just helping where I can um, on what's needed for the board. I'm, I've only been to, to, technically I've only had my um, one meeting, so I'm, uh, it's a lot to learn and uh, I'm, and my wife will tell you that I've asked her a lot of questions about a lot of this, trying to understand it all. 
we'll be learning together because yeah. that carries a, a yeah. broad spectrum of. Uh, it's going to be it's uh, going to be interesting and fun. I, yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Wood. Thanks. And, and I, I sympathize you with with you with the uh, last name things because sometimes the teachers go in reverse order. Yeah. And then I'm first. <laughs> um, but the mayor doesn't do that, which works out well for it for most people. Get it over with. Um, so so one of the things that people often don't understand is is the amount of time that this job takes and I would venture to say that everybody on this council uh, at one point thought that it was gonna be a lot less work than it really is um, they told me it was only on Tuesdays and they they lied to me but um, but 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 having said that it's it's a significant uh, time time issue and, and time crunch and that sort of thing so tell me a little bit how you would manage doing this job as well as all your other things that you have to do work and things like that how, how would you manage your time uh that's been a uh a long discussion both at work and at home um a lot uh if if i was um uh, you know lucky enough to to be on council uh of course a lot of the civic boards um community boards would that would have to drop off except for being a liaison uh, that would relieve a lot of time uh, after work. Um, with my job in the construction sales business, I'm on the road 90% of the time, 35,000 miles a year, just in the Tidewater area. So I, I've I, I've got a lot of leeway to. And, and w last year, when uh, when I first started running for city council, you know that was one of my main. Um, explanations of how I do my job you know the zoom meetings and I'm not that type of person I'm a one-on-one -on -one wanting to meet you personally um, and get to know you just the staff I, I can be in and go meet staff managers uh, for an hour and, and and still be on the phone working and and be back again because you know, the way my job is I've been doing it for over 35 years uh, it's it's not like I'm green and, and have to cold call my customers and my architects that I deal with. So it, it's I've got a lot of leeway. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Ms. Wooten. Good afternoon, Mr. Anderson. Good Thanks afternoon. for being here. Um, what are your thoughts about the city of Virginia Beach um, having a citizens review panel? Uh, I have listened uh, listened to the news last night about the review panel. Um, I know that's um, a, a contentious uh, on, on several sides on how that panel should be viewed and, and what kind of power they should have. Um, I have not researched it enough to say I agree with the panel having, you know, uh, a the power that certain people want and or it, you know, it's kind of I, I need to do some more research to be able to say yes I agree with you know give them the power for um, and uh, get uh, trying to think of the correct word but uh, uh, repri reprimanding uh, any actions any any mm -hmm. uh, or vice versa so I'd have to defer to for more research my other thank you for answering that my other question is what do you think what is your best quality um, to lead in this position uh, personal touch one-on-one uh, -on -one, like I said a few minutes ago um, I can definitely say I'm not the smartest person in the room but I'm <coughs> probably I don't think that anybody uh, is any harder working than I am especially when I do have a an item like what we just talked about that I don't know enough about and I I, I do my due diligence and, and I meet people t that know and so I can learn from them I mean I that's why I, um, see I, I visit a lot I see a lot of people I have a lot of personal relationships in business that other people don't because I like to get to know who I'm dealing with mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Tower. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anderson, for being here. Really appreciate your, your uh, stepping up and taking interest in 
the process. Uh, my question relates to the uh, possible restructuring of council's uh, representation issues, just having uh, ward systems for shorthand. Uh, and I wonder what your thoughts are about uh, how council can best deal with changing if we, in fact, do, as it appears we will, at least until this appeal we have is uh, d disposed of on a, di on a pure district basis. Uh, two aspects. You got uh, on the candidate side, it's really uh, good that if you could have just a ward system, so you're only focusing on that one ward versus trying to get your uh, voters through the whole city. Um, <coughs> on the other hand, um, you need to get to know, you know all parties, all you know, the oceanfront, Centerville, Kempsville. Um, it, it's a it's a tough uh, answer. Um, I I'm afraid. That uh, my district will uh, will be cut up a lot if it if it comes to that, and and uh, it is a pretty large district. Um, but the aspect of how 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 we vote, um, I I lean towards the way we have it now, um, just so council members can. Can be out and, and see everybody, and you know get to know uh, you know other residents in other parts of the city. Uh, well, if I could follow up, my question really relates more to assuming there's a district system, or do you have any ideas about how council can act in a uh, in a more unified way than might be the case if if we take no action to to see that we are do that uh, be honest with you I'd have to defer on that okay <clears throat> thank you okay anyone else <coughs> okay mr. Anderson thank you very thank much you. okay uh, next on the list William J Dale welcome Good afternoon. mayor Dyer members of council I'm William Dale of OA to go by bill I come before you to seek appointment as a member of council serving the Kempsville district I believe you're familiar with my bio and my resume and I will not belabor you with that information again I bring 40 years of active participation and experience in the life of this city and my community of Kempsville having worked with you and with many city leaders I have demonstrated leadership skills, good judgment, and a strong ability to organize and work with others. While I may at times hold and express strong views and opinions, they are complemented by an open mind and a willingness to search for a common good. I am not opposed to compromise and believe that the council and its members should always be guided by what is best for the people of our city. The strong and divergent views at times expressed by council members must be viewed as a strength of this body and not a weakness. When all sides of an issue are not only heard, but also appreciated, the final decision is much easier to accept. As you are aware, or may be aware, I've run twice for the Kempsville seat, and while unsuccessful in both bids, I've had the good fortune of knocking on many doors and learning even more about my district. In the last election, I won the endorsement of our teachers, our firefighters, and our police. If appointed to council, my first goal will be to get up to speed on the issues that are before you, and particularly the concerns of the Kempsville district. I will first seek out Jessica Abbott and endeavor to learn from her the issues and concerns that she has surfaced while serving the district. She will also be invaluable in identifying the people who will need to be contacted. In a similar vein, I'll reach out to the leaders of our civic organizations to gain their insights and to set up encounters with our civic organizations. I would look forward to briefings from our city staff to gain a broader appreciation for the wider agenda 
And finally, as I've done before, I will call upon you to fill in the empty spaces. I do not come before you with any hidden agenda, although I do share some major concerns for our near future. COVID remains a critical health crisis in our community. As a tourist mecca, we will be impacted by it more so than other communities. While recognizing that some are growing tired and restless with the demands of this health crisis, nevertheless, the life, health, and safety of our citizens must always be the first priority of those in leadership. I applaud the decision of council to establish a bond referendum in November to address flooding. This is deserving of all the time and effort council can give to it, garnering the support for this referendum. It has long been needed and is worthy of support. In November 2022, we will have had to establish a new voting system for our city and possibly redraw districts, be it 10-1 or 7-3-1. If this is to be successful, time is of the essence, and it will demand time, energy, and the direction of this council. Finally, in all of this, I bring a strong belief that greater efforts at broad inclusion will go a long way to energize this city, call forth new leadership, and make our work even more productive. My experience has taught me that often the task of working together results in greater success than the completion of the project itself. As an addendum in response to the questions of a council member, yes, yes, yes. I thank you for your attention and trusting that you appreciate my brevity. I await any questions you might have. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Moss. I just want to extend my appreciation for your brevity. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And always a good trend for a politician. <laughs> Anybody else? Mrs. Henley and then Mr. Wood. It's good to see you again. Remember you. a long time ago when we worked on Christmas in July? Oh, gosh, <laughs> yes, I do, I do. Uh, well, anyway, I would look forward to working with you again if you're successful. One of the earliest, one of the first hot potatoes you're <clears> going to get to vote on if you make this seat is a short-term rental issue. Yes. What's your opinion of the ordinances that we have proposed I think it's moving in the right direction um, I do appreciate the distinction being made between the tourist section of the beach and the residential section I mean they really are two distinctly different areas um, I believe that careful monitoring is what the citizens are demanding I, I've talked to a number of citizens that are impacted by short-term rentals in their area um, I'm not sure how it can be addressed, but I think the distinction must be made between um, residents of Virginia Beach who own property that is used for short-term rental and those who live outside of the area um, and use short-term rentals. And that has to do with oversight um, and protecting the, the neighborhoods themselves. I think that should be a major concern for council. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ward. So similar question that I asked before about time management, if you recall that one. I think it, I'm, I am approaching retirement. I work three days a week now, which gives me four days. On February 1st, I'm fully retired. That, uh, that gives me a, no small amount of time, and um, my wife wants me to do something, and I expect <laughs> this will be a full-time job. Anybody else? Ms. Wooten and Mr. Yes. Tower. Good afternoon, Mr. Dale. Hello. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, understand that uh, you have served as a chaplain. Yes. Um, tell me, in your experience as a chaplain, how you think that will help you serve in this position? Oh, I think I bring a sense of empathy, and that's, that's really important. I, I think the most important skill is listening, uh, and not just listening, but really attempting to hear what the other person has to say and to have custody of the tongue so that, um, that I don't speak too soon or over speak, um, allow those who are raising the questions to have their questions heard. Thank you. And my other question would be, what are your thoughts about the Citizens Review Panel? Okay, I was the, uh, the first chair of the Investigative Review Panel and helped put that together. So I, I come with some sense of history about it. Um, the critical issue is, the issue of subpoenas that 
that without the subpoena, I really believe it's ineffective. But at the same time, any decision has to be made to ensure that our police department does not see it as a threat to its integrity. Um, and so in whatever way it is fashioned or developed, I think the police department has to be an integral part of any decision that is made. Um, and I believe that working cooperatively, we can come out with something that is endorsed by and supported by a much broader group in the city. Thank you. Mr. Tower. I'm asking you the same question. Welcome, by the way. Thank you, Bill, for being here. It's good to see you. Um, I'm asking for your ingenuity and creativity if you have any suggestions to us as we face the prospect of uh, dealing with district representation and the so-called <laughs> ward system. If it's a 731 system, it'll take very little work on the part of council. Um, it'll be a little bit more difficult if it is 10-1. And I'm not sure if council has enough time to be able to do that between now and 2022, given the time that is necessary for candidates to run for those offices. It'll mean redrawing the lines of the district, apportioning that. It'll probably mean different polling places to assist with that as well. Um, a decision will be have to, made, have to be made about who remains on council and who does not and how that staggering process takes place. So uh, a decision in the short term would really benefit council and would benefit the city. Um, again, 731, not a problem. 10-1, um, we're probably late in starting that process. Um, council has to take re leadership and direction and um, citizen involvement will be important um, but if it slows the process down, we could be between a rock and a hard place come November of 2022. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. yeah, Mr. Jones. Bill. Yeah. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, you speak so li uh, so lightly that I, I missed your comment about the investigative review panel. I'm sorry. Um, the issue I believe the investigative review panel um, has to address and face is the issue of subpoena power. Without subpoena power, I do not believe that, that the new panel will be any more effective than the investigative review panel of 20 years ago. But at the same time, the panel cannot be perceived by the police department as something that is over and against them um, that creates friction between the two. And I believe the only way that it can be resolved credibly is by having the police department as intimately involved in the development of the panel as the citizens are, so that both can come away from it with a model and something that they're both able to support and understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, moving forward, Naomi Estaris. Welcome. Hello and good afternoon, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wood, and members of City Council, and hello to my fellow residents of Virginia Beach. My name is Naomi Astaris. My husband is Roy Astaris. I have two sons, three stepdaughters, and five wonderful grandchildren. I'm the daughter of Nestor and Nellie Villanueva. My dad served in the Navy for 20 years, serving both on the East and the West Coast, including Guantanamo Bay for five years before retiring here in Norfolk. I graduated from Granby High School and ODU with a BS administration with a concentration in accounting. Before I begin my remarks, I want to thank each of you for considering my application. It is truly an honor to be invited here today to share my interest in serving the Kempsville citizens and the citizens of this very great city, Virginia Beach. Also, I want to extend my prayers to former Councilwoman Jessica Abbott for her health and her family recognizing that the decision to step down must have been a very difficult one, but a personal necessity. I want to acknowledge my neighbors of Kempsville who also applied to serve our very great district. I want to especially recognize Rocky Holcomb and Amelia Ross Hammond as they have been in my home and have supported me in every different kind of initiatives that were important to both Kempsville and to the city. I live, work, and play in the city of Virginia Beach. This is my home. This is the home of my children and my grandchildren. We all need to take a responsibility to keep our city the best. 
I am doing just this by taking the action by being here today. After graduating from college, I first bought my first condo on Virginia Beach off Baxter Road. Coincidentally, off Baxter Road is also the home of the largest Philippine cultural center on the East Coast. I have lived in my husband's ancestral home for over 10 years in the heart of Kempsville. One of my greatest endeavors has been working with the Sister City Association and with Vice Mayor Jim Wood, setting the foundation of our anchor monument in Kemp's Landing Park, which aptly re represents the heart of the Philippine community. This marked the symbolism of our military ties. <clears throat> Citizens who visit Olongapo or Virginia Beach can see the ties that bind us. This partnership has helped open possible economic ties between the Port of Virginia and the Subic Port, student exchange programs and training firefighters. These programs and projects are proof of the relationship are anchored on stability, confidence, and hope for even a stronger bond for future. From this program, I had the opportunity to work with several city departments, including Parks and Recs, Economic Development, School Board, Tallwood High School, Fire Training Academy, and the Virginia Port Authority. I submitted for this appointment to serve Kemsville residents because it's important to take the action in solidarity and to be part of a core team. There are many initiatives that make the city great. It is my hope that I can help achieve the city's goals in the following areas, which are also aligned in the city's top priorities. That includes sea level rise, economic development, revitalizing neighborhoods, being the safest city in Virginia, data and technology to be, to be used in enhanced community livability, and to be a competitive first class resort for residents, businesses, and tourists. If appointed, these would be the areas I would support as my priorities. I am confident that my professional experience of 10 years in a Fortune 500 company as a tax compliance audit manager, my 12 years experience in international not-for-profit Operation Smile as the chief operating officer, and my 10 plus years in self-employed in a travel small business, and currently as the founder of Enjul, a not-for-profit fighting against human trafficking, providing education and preventive services in our community, community coupled with my volunteer work with Envision 2040 for six years, which reflected the desired future state of our city, as well as serving on the board of Sister City Association for over five years, will all help prepare me for greater service and to serve the citizens of Kempsville, as well as the city. At Angel, we created the SOS plan, which stands for Summer of Safety Series, that includes self-defense programs, gun safety, and internet safety for adults and children. Like Michael Berlucci serving on the Human Rights Commission, we believe people who are more cognizant of their surroundings and have the tools to better prepare themselves in defending themselves prevents a person to be a possible victim for all persons. It's encouraging to hear that the hotel motel operators want this for their employees. Restaurant and bar employees want to know what the signs are, how to spot it, how to prevent it, and how to report it. If appointed, would continue plans initiated with Sabrina Wooten to collaborate with small businesses and local educational institutions. This program has allowed me to interface with people that have shared some concerns, such as workforce and short-term rentals. In the area of workforce, as president of the Philippine American Chamber of Commerce, I've shared the jobs fairs and sites that would help fill those needs. I believe property owners have the right to do what they want to do on their property, but will also follow steps guided by Guy Towers and Barbara Henley which have shared the concerns of short-term rentals and want to further review the ordinance as well as the conditional use permits. There is such a great chance of crimes occurring on these properties as well as human trafficking and vandalism. We need to look out for the safety of our residents as well as our property owners. It is important that I share with you what I have done to prepare for the appointment opportunity. It's like getting a new job. I reached out to city council members, spoke to them on the phone, or even met with them personally. I appreciate that time that was afforded to me to hear your challenges and the issues that are at hand. What was also important was gaining institutional knowledge and to hear from someone who had their ear to the grindstone and heard firsthand the challenges that I would carry on if given the opportunity. I spoke to former city councilwoman Jessica Abbott. Issues that I asked her included the existing lawsuit with the city of Virginia Beach. Like her, I agree with and support to continue the appeal. As a minority myself, I do not feel that there is a minority that is a majority in any one district. This appeal issue that is concerned with the federal voting rights is now in legal process and is very complex. I support equal rights and the right to vote. I will be voting in favor of the referendum in November to help fund a broader flood mitigation strategy with more aggressive timelines as often expressed 
by Mayor Dyer and John Moss. I also stand, as Jessica did, in the prioritization of what is considered phase one. Although our district will be one of the last to be remodeled, I agree that we prioritize districts that were in dire need to be the focus. Another significant area initiated by both Rosemary Wilson and Lewis Jones is the preservation of historic Kempsville to be carried forward. I appreciate the resolution of the land bank project. Jessica was also able to have the current Robinson development to include the remedial environment contamination cleanup, which will relieve the taxpayers and the city of those costs. This will be a key thing to follow through on through this redevelopment project and revitalization of the neighborhoods as Aaron Rouse has fought successfully in his district, as well as key to communicating to the residents of Kempsville and CAC, the Kempsville Community Association. On Envision 2040, I was heavily in agreement with multimodal transport <coughs> programs, including light rail. After discussing with Jessica, I have to say that the people have spoken. We will have to work to find other ways that we can afford access for all citizens, such as our elders and our handicapped citizens. Realizing there was an overwhelming 57% against light rail in the 2016 decision, Jessica was hard to work to find other means of resolution, such as the right of ways. I do agree that we need to preserve Rudy Loop. It is our last of our prime properties at the beach, and I'm in favor of to leave this place to be enjoyed by both residents and visitors. A great example of this is our Filipino festival, who I've had great assistance from both Guy Tower and the commissioner, George Alcaraz. We were able to use this same space for our festival for two years. It is an amazing space that shows our beachfront and the beautification of this area. I have learned a great deal and have even read even more. I'm a team player and do a great deal of listening. I learned a lot from my meeting with City Councilman Henley and the importance of how economic development and industry take a major play in our ag agriculture. I shared with her my need to glean more from her and to better understand the Agricultural Reserve Program. There should be no doubt that my experience, my knowledge, my tenacity to learn, to listen, to hear, and to communicate are all the keys to know that I'm prepared to serve city council. And I say, I am ready now. <laughs> if considered for this appointment, it will truly be an honor to serve the citizens of Virginia Beach. My commitment is unwavering. The position of, is of great importance, and I will give it the time to be the best of our citizens deserve with integrity and authenticity. It is my hope that you see me as an anchor that is here to stay, appointed this time, and God willing, will also run in the November 2022 election. As I shared, the anchor we erected in Kempsville is the anchor of a symbol of stability, <laughs> confidence, and hope. Those are the traits that are important to any team. I bring this to the team, stability, confidence, and hope for our city of Virginia Beach. I appreciate your time and your careful consideration of my candidacy. I now open this time for any questions that you may have for me. Okay, any questions? Ms. Wooten, Mr. Wood. All right, I, I can start. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for being here this yes. afternoon. Um, what are your thoughts on the Citizens Review Panel? I believe I've researched this greatly, and I believe in transparency and accountability. I also do believe that we have to have our police as part of that committee. They have to have that authority and they have to have that, but we also as citizens must be part of that panel to make sure there is complete <coughs> transparency and accountability. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ward. Same question about the uh, time management. I fill my plate greatly, but I also embrace projects. When I start them, I finish them. I believe that I've actually started allocating stuff that was on my plate, but I do have effective time management and I like working with people. So I have family members and I have friends that have actually taken on some of the stuff that was on my plate, but I am allocating the time appropriately to be able to spend the time that's necessary to spend with the citizens of Kempsville as well as the city council members around this table. Thanks. Okay. Oh, Ms. Wilson. I apologize for being late, but I'm what? you and Mike and Bill to know I heard everything you had to say so I had my thank you Facebook live so none of your words were missed and I apologize uh, thank you you did a lovely job thank you um, also if you are appointed would you be running in 2022 to keep the seat yes I will and like I said when I start something I don't I complete it 
and I have spent much time spending with my family, specifically my husband, to make sure that is the movement. Yes. Thank you. God willing. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Naomi. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Patrick. Okay. Next up is uh, Michael B. Feggins. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, Council Members. Uh, before I begin today, uh, I must begin by giving a statement. Uh, I'm, uh, I must give a statement because I'm active duty Air Force still. So because of that, uh, I've retired 1 September 2021. Uh, and any, any opinions or statements that I give today are on my own and not of the Department of Defense or the United States Air Force. Uh, with, that, with that out the way, uh, hello, my name is, uh, full name is Michael Benjamin Fagans, uh, and I would like to thank the City Council and the uh, Mayor today for this opportunity. Uh, during my presentation today, I'm going to highlight some of my personal uh, background, my leadership experience, uh, promises that I would make to the residents of Kentsville, uh, some of the innovative ideas I believe that I could help bring, uh, and how I, I think I could help improve in Virginia Beach. Uh, first, I'd like to start by discussing that, you know, I'm a proud uh, uh, product of Centerville, Brandon, and Tallwood High School, uh, go Lions. Uh, I lettered in track and football. Um, I was nowhere near as good as uh, Council Member Rouse. Uh, he graduated a year after me, uh, but I remember him out on the field. Uh, I grew up in Charlestown Lake South, so both of my parents uh, were, are from, uh, worked in Norfolk. My, my mom was a teacher in Norview Elementary and my father was a firefighter at, uh, in Norfolk Air, at the Norfolk Airport where he uh, retired as a captain. Uh, he was also in the Air Force. And so in 2000, uh, and so I decided to follow in his footsteps. So in 2001, uh, I followed him in his footsteps and uh, my, back, my professional background in the Air Force is healthcare uh, services management. I specialized in medical cybersecurity for the past 10 years uh, and before my retirement this year, uh, my last position was serving as the senior enlisted leader for the 71st Healthcare Operations Squadron, Advanced Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be stationed in Texas, Oklahoma, Ohio, Guam, South Korea, and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, serving both home and abroad has given me the unique appreciation uh, for what our city has offered. Uh, thanks to the military significant educational funding, uh, I've achieved and exceeded many of my academic uh, goals that I set out for when I left uh, in 2001. I graduated with a BS in healthcare administration uh, from Park University in Missouri. Uh, I have a, a political science uh, a certification from Virginia Tech. And it's always been important for me to be a part of a uh, historically black college. And so in 2019, I obtained my master's in uh, cybersecurity uh, from Norfolk State University. I'll officially retire uh, with the rank of Master Sergeant on 1 September 2021. Uh, and since we're a Navy town, uh, that's the rank, uh, rank equivalent of a, of a Chief Petty Officer. Uh, the military gave me a chance to learn leadership principles and what it means to be a servant leader from the beginning. Uh, at age 21, I was able to serve as the president of the Base Enlist Advisory Council at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, uh, where I was actually as the E-4 uh, responsible for all uh, E-6 and below. Uh, that's why I learned the importance of getting the pulse of the people understanding the community, diving into policy, and understanding the regulations that govern budgets. The military also allowed me to push boundaries and what's expected of an enlisted leader. Uh, I, from there, I was able to, uh, in 2012, I successfully petitioned the Air Force to become the first enlisted uh, airman to work for Congress, where I, where I uh, successfully became a member of Senator Jim Webb's team and then actually Senator Warner's team in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, uh, and I, I worked in Norfolk. From here, I learned the importance that, uh, you know, all politics is local and the importance of community outreach. It didn't matter what political party you were a part of. Uh, if you had an issue related to your mortgage, if you had a federal background clearance issues, or if your grandfather had Korean War uh, uh, records that they were trying to obtain, we were here there to help to assist. So this allowed me to be, you know, to, to learn about the community and also learn about the nonprofit uh, partners that help Virginia Beach and try to make us better. My overseas operational experience include deploying in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, uh, where I was responsible for all healthcare, IT, and aeromedical evacuations in our area responsibility, and also was able to work with the State Department in helping to create a, uh, create a computer lab for the community. I also most recently led a multinational team in South Korea where we were responsible for bringing online a new hospital uh, that's gonna support joint contingency operations. 
My background also includes interning, uh, interning for the Virginia Secretary of Technology Office, where we worked to expand broadband, and I was able to help devise the name Are You Online <coughs> survey to discover gaps in broadband Virginia. Like many medical professionals, our training was put to the test over this past year, and COVID-19 right, COVID uh, really hurt us. I led a team that was responsible for developing a COVID-19 patient tracker that was quickly beta tested over 30 DOD uh, and NATO bases, and we were able to quickly take uh, the data from that and put that into a joint system that's currently being utilized today. Finally, I'm completing a three-month internship right now through SkillBridge as a policy advisor for uh, HD85 uh, delegate Alex Askew. All these experiences have helped me in the creation of my startup uh, company, Outerbridge Technical Solutions, which is focused on providing uh, service to nonprofits and small businesses uh, that are based, and uh, my company is based in Town Center. Uh, next, I'd just like to discuss a little bit of my nonprofit leadership uh, and then go on from there. Uh, I've had the chance to work as a, uh, uh, at leadership positions and thrive uh, young professionals, Urban League Young Professionals, United Way African American Leadership Society. Uh, I've also been a, a, in leadership positions in many areas with Team Rubicon, which is a disaster response team, and we actually uh, deployed from here to work uh, some of the uh, tornadoes that, that affected some of the areas uh, a few years ago. Uh, finally, I've had the chance to actually work on the Virginia Beach Cybersecurity Committee uh, and, and suggest ideas to, to make our uh, city more secure. Uh, some of the future plans that I have for Virginia Beach. Uh, next, you know, I would like to first look at, you know, advancing some of our social safety net by having more groups respond quickly to those uh, close to housing instability and partner with more nonprofits, some of our religious groups, some of the city and, and advancing more of our city and state organizations to stabilize them. Uh, I do not believe that most people are looking for a hand up, hand out. They're just looking for a hand up. Uh, next, I'd like to increase our startup incubator, uh, incubator funding. Uh, what we're doing with the Hive is great, and I believe we can have more efforts to encourage uh, local startups and also tackle some of the issues that are uh, with some of our underutilized storefronts that exist in our areas. Uh, I've had the, exam I had the chance when I was uh, living in uh, Ohio, uh, Ohio actually offered me the chance to cover my rent for a startup that I had for there for six months. And that startup money was, 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 a, it was a great asset. And from, from there 10 years ago, many of those same storefronts in that city have now been taken care of uh, because those startups were, were allowed to flourish without having to worry about rent for the first six months. Um, Additionally, I believe it's important to reduce the complexity of starting a business. As someone who started a business here in Virginia Beach, uh, there was a lot of going back and forth between offices and, and a lot of confusion. Uh, so if we could figure out ways to increase, our, you know, in, increase the mobility friendly uh, and reduce the amount of paperwork, I think that's going to help some of our startup issues. Uh, finally, I think we have a great opportunity to add a uh, skill bridge to a lot of our police, fire, engineers, and other departments by bringing in our military and allowing them to transition and allow them to stay in the community. Finally, uh, I'd like to discuss some of the promises I would make to some of this, uh, to the residents of Kentsville. If, sele if selected for this position, I would donate 100% of my salary uh, to Kentsville EMS Services, Virginia Supportive Housing, Virginia e Beach Educational Foundation, and the Virginia Beach SBCA. I believe it, for me, I would not be uh, comfortable with taking the salary until I was actually elected by the residents of Kentsville. I promise not to also expand my business at all with any Virginia Beach uh, city offices or any of the other Hampton Roads uh, city offices as well. Uh, in closing, I just would like to uh, come, I've, I've had comments that some feel that uh, I'm too young or inexperienced for this uh, capacity, but I believe I'm exactly what the city preaches for uh, when they want for a young workforce. I'm a millennial who's instead of taking a job in DC, New York, or San Francisco, chose to come back home because I believe it's important to show others that Virginia Beach is a great place to work and live. I can't say that I'm the best candidate for the past, but I believe I'm the best candidate for the future. The residents of Virginia Beach expect us to work as a team, and I, re I believe regardless of our personal political affiliations that we may hold, that we will do the best uh, to our, in our abilities. Uh, with that, uh, I'd just like to thank the council again for uh, allowing me to be here today, and I stand by for any questions or comments. Thank you. Mr. Ward. So same question I've asked everybody else, the uh, issue about time management. Uh, yes, I, my, my, uh, my personal business uh, is all of our clients are actually focused over in, uh, in Asia and the Pacific region. So at, you know, most of the time I'm actually working at five or six in the evenings and I'm, I have the ability to schedule out all of my clients two or three months in advance. So during the daytime, I'm, I'm actually just uh, working on education. So I would have 
uh, the full time to be able to commit to uh, the council and to the uh, residents of Virginia Beach. Thank you. Okay, no, Mr. Moss. Well, first of all, you're never too young. The person who departed that seat was 26 when she was elected. And that gets to my questions, the three questions which I trust you got in advance. Yes, Council Member. The three questions addressed in material and topical policy questions that the former millennial, uh, Council Member Jessica Abbott, affirmatively answered and supported during her tenure and during her reelection when 120,000 people returned to the office. So I think these questions are, are legitimate to ask. First and foremost, that question, if you were listening, I'm sure you were, is would you continue to support this body's appeal of Judge Jackson's decision on the Voting Rights Act of 1965? Uh, no, I would not. Based on how uh, uh, Delegates uh, Fowler's and it's already been signed into law, I would not support it. Can you Have you read his 135-page opinion? I have not read the entire. I tried to find it, but I could not find the entire opinion. Right, thank you. Uh, secondly, she was also not in favor of revisiting and extending light rail to the city of Virginia Beach from Norfolk until such time as the voters in a referendum reversed their position of 2016. Do you support that position? Yes, I do. And lastly, she was a strong supporter, along with my good friend, Councilmember Rosemary Wilson, of protecting uh, Rudy Loop from commercial development and preserving it for public use. Would you support that position? No, I would not. All right, thank you very much. I have one other question, if I could. Yes, sir. I, know, is, I assume you've been on terminal leave, is that correct? I will start terminal leave in three or four days. Because I'm, I'm, I'm currently on skill bridge right now, assigned to delegate, I ask you. So you would not be able to take office until your official retirement? No, I'm actually, and so based on the uh, DOD regulations, uh, enlisted members are authorized to uh, serve on nonpartisan uh, uh, city councils. I would like to. I, I, I have that opinion from, uh, from our JAG officer, you and I can send that to you. That be sure can. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else? Yep, Ms. Wooten and Mr. Taylor. Thank you for being here, Mr. Fagans, and thank you for your service to our country. Um, my question um, is about your preparation. Um, from the first day, hitting the ground running, what are some of the things that you would focus on um, to be a part of this office and serve the citizens in Kempsville? Uh, some of the first things I would I would try to do is, you know, I, I've, the best thing when you're starting a new place or, or trying to get to a uh, learn about a place is immersions. I would immerse myself with, you know, especially with the small businesses in the community. Uh, I would try to schedule as, as many meetings as I could uh, during the week, uh, just learning and seeing and seeing what some of the issues with uh, with that that affect our small businesses. Uh, next, I would get with. I, I really believe it's important to partner with our our nonprofits and our religious groups that exist in our areas. And I would try to have uh, uh, sit down and sit down meetings to really discuss and hear them out because I think that's where the best place that uh, I would be able to serve at is by just listening and and seeing where the concerns are and then being able to take back those concerns to this body. Thank you, Mr. Tower, and then Ms. Wilson, and then Ms. Henry. Mr. Fagus, thank you for being here. Thanks for your application. We welcome you and uh, thank you for your service. I, I have a question. I heard you're talking about teamwork, and I'm somewhat familiar, although I'm not a veteran of the military service, of, of the emphasis on teamwork. So I hope you will bring, if you were appointed, you would bring that, those skills and help us uh, with teamwork here. I'm not suggesting that we don't have them now, but we could always use more. I want to ask you a question about the resort area. I represent the Beach District, which is, uh, encompasses most, most of the resort uh, community, not all of it, but most of it. But I spend a good bit of my time speaking with businesses large and small and residents in the, uh, the resort area. What is your view of the uh, importance of the tourism and resort business to the, to the city? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not an understatement to say that, you know, tourism is the lifeblood for, for, for what our city is known for. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, when, when you talked about, talk to individuals about Virginia Beach, they mentioned the resort, if, you know, maybe they haven't been here before, but it's important. Uh, I, you know, I, I love going down to the resort. I, I love being and seeing, uh, and, you know, the, the areas of improvement that we're trying to make, especially with the dome site is really, I think is going to be a, a attractive to where, uh, for, you know, for bringing, um, a newer generation down to the, to the beach. And, it's important for you know the safety. You know, seeing the uh, the beach ambassadors down there is is a, is a great improvement. Um, and the while we need to figure, we need to continue to figure out ways uh, to diversify our uh, the economy that Virginia Beach has. 
the beach will always hold a special part, uh, and I believe it's, it, it, there's always going to be an importance. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Wilson, then Ms. Uh, Emily. Just thought I'd ask what the others, would you be running in 2022 if appointed, or, or not appointed, maybe? <laughs> Uh, yes, if, if I was appointed uh, for, for this session, I would uh, run, again, run again in 2022 uh, council member. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Henley. Well, I uh, was uh, very interested in reading your comments uh, when I got to the paragraph that said that as an 18-year-old, uh, you enlisted in the Air Force. I have two grandsons that are following that track. Oh, congratulations I hope to you're them! As successful as you apparently were. It's been it's been a great experience. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> I'm a grandma that worries so. Um, you've been away from Virginia Beach for a long time. A lot of what we do on City Council has to do with land use, and if you were appointed this Thursday, next Tuesday, you would be starting to vote on land use issues. How do you? expect to be able to get to know all of the neighborhoods well enough to deal with land use issues and do you have any of that in your background um i could not honestly say that i have you know a, 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 a substantial amount of uh knowledge on on land use it would uh it would it would be it would be uh you know drinking out the water, a, a fire hose um for, for that pur purpose but i believe uh even even with that that amount of no uh, information that i would be able to take in um, that I would be up to the challenge of, of learning and being able to provide uh, accurate information and opinions on land use for Virginia Beach. People are very concerned about their neighborhoods. We learned that really quickly. Yes, yes, they are. I've seen the public comments yeah. on that, yes. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, the 17-year-old jarhead th <laughs> with the Air Force brother thanks you for your time. I really appreciate, appreciate it. That. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Rocky Holcomb. Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, and honorable members of council. Thank you for calling the special session on this most important appointment. And let me say you have a tough decision, and I've read many of the resumes here, and I see the folks that graduated, and they say magna cum laude, well, in, first, in full disclosure, when I graduated, they said, thank you, good laudy. So, <laughs> so we, can all agree, uh, we can all agree that Councilwoman Abbott has left some big shoes to fill. My name is Rocky Holcomb, and I'm honored to stand before you today. I'm certain you have read my submitted documentation, and you are familiar with my body of work to this city and this commonwealth. What I would like to do right now is take a few minutes and talk about the why. That's the most important issue, I think, is the why a candidate stands here today. Because I have been involved in this political process and I understand the amount of time and dedication it takes to be in this position. And folks that are your friends today will quickly not be your friends tomorrow when you're elected to this body or serve on this body or any appointed body. <laughs> so I'd like to tell you a story. The year was 1968. The month was June and the location was a small coal mining town in southwest Virginia in the town of Bluefield. A baby was born to a Methodist minister and a home care nurse. They had very little in the way of resources or money, but they had big love and big hope. When this baby was born, the baby had a collapsed right lung and was placed on life support with very little chance of survival. So the parents were told to gather the family and start the grieving process. As the baby laid there on life support, the family prayed and hoped for the very best. After a day or so, the doctor said, the baby's not getting better, but the baby's not getting worse. Let's take him off life support. So the doctor took the baby off life support and handed the baby to his father, who sits in this room today. And the father said, this is my son, and he's had a rocky way to go. <laughs> so as the family handed this child around the room and each family member said, let me hold little Rocky. That is how the world got to know the man standing here humbly before you today. My grandmother, rest her soul, she would tell me this story over and over and each time expressing on me the responsibility I had to this community and making this world a better place. So I tell this story to help each of you understand my why. See, my entire life I've been reminded of my beginnings and the blessing that I received. 
and more importantly, the responsibility that I have to make this community a better place. Fighting for something or someone is all I have known since I was born. And that fighting spirit is why I joined the United States Marine Corps and served this country. And upon my honorable discharge from the United States Marine Corps, I started my employment at the Virginia Beach Sheriff's Office, where I serve today as the Chief Deputy. I have lived behind a badge for 30 plus years, serving this community that we all love and enjoy. And that same fighting spirit is exactly why I got into politics and became the first ever full-time law enforcement officer elected to the oldest legislative body in the Western Hemisphere, the Virginia General Assembly. It's why I ran for the House of Delegates, and we were able to get several bills passed as a freshman delegate. The very first piece of legislation was a joint resolution on the study of mental health patients and how we can better serve them while incarcerated. This small step to solving a critical problem resulted in a groundswell of support that has helped us here in the city of Virginia Beach create a pilot program for the treatment of the folks that suffer this horrible, terrible disease that is mental illness. This program is being seen as a model for the rest of the Commonwealth. And I say thank you to each member of this council for your support on this program. So folks, I offer a unique perspective and unique lens to problem solving. I bring 30 plus years of law enforcement experience and I also bring experience from the Virginia General Assembly where I proudly re represented much of the Kempsville District in Richmond, serving as their delegate. While serving in the General Assembly as a member of the Finance Committee, as well as the Committee on Counties, Cities, and Towns, I learned much about state and local government. While a member of the Finance Committee, I was able to study and work hard learning the different revenue sources and expenditures associated in balancing Virginia's very robust budget. On the Committee for Counties, Cities, and Towns, I was involved in understanding legislation to assist localities, also understanding the most important Dillon Rule and its application here in the Commonwealth. Given my past experiences and my time in state and local government, as well as my familiarity with campaigning all through the Kempsville District, I feel this puts me in the proper posture to hit the ground running on day one and being a productive member of council with a very small learning curve. I understand that we must maintain a safe city that allows residents and neighbors to feel safe and protected, whether it be at home, at school, or out enjoying any of our beautiful parks, beaches, or shopping centers. To keep our city safe and well protected, we must continue to support our first responders with top-notch pay, first-class benefits, and high levels of training. We also must continue to let our first responders know we support them and we stand behind them. I understand that we must enhance opportunities for citizens to increase their wealth and prosperity. We do this by letting folks know that we are open for business and we are a business-friendly city. We all understand that economic development only strengthens our ability to create, attract, retain, and grow more jobs in our city. I understand the need for first-class school system. Schools are the places which build the future workforce and drive the economy. In the General Assembly, I saw firsthand the Northern Virginia school districts in places like Falls Church and Arlington outranking our Virginia Beach schools. However, our schools are quickly closing that gap and will soon be the best in the Commonwealth. To this body and to the citizens, I would like to tell you my commitment if appointed to this body. I will always listen to the constituents we represent very carefully. I understand that government closest to the people is the most productive government. I will stay educated on the issues that are before us and I will work, work hard learning all I can on these issues. I will be a true team player. I will always be an engaged participant on issues. I will be well prepared and arrive to meetings and appointments on time. I will always be a team player that someone is easy to work with. I understand that we can disagree without being rude or uncivil towards one another. In fact, I have watched this council work and I can honestly say you all agree on much more than you disagree on. In closing, and we know when a politician says in closing, he's only getting warmed up. <laughs> In closing, this council is facing very real 21st century problems that must be handled, not with solutions of today, but scan the horizon and find solutions for the future. As I go around our city, I'm hearing a very disturbing theme being developed. The theme is about this community or that community or even this group or that group. We need to tear down these community walls and group walls and be inclusive and understanding. Let's work together with all peoples to be one single community 
that is to me and always will be VB Strong. I'm reminded of the words of the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go as a group. I suggest we go as that group and go far. Well, I say now is the time that we represent this community in one goal, making our Virginia Beach the very best Virginia Beach that it can be. A city that everyone can be proud of, regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. One community moving forward and leaving no one behind. And with that, I would like to say thank you to this body. Thank you very much for this opportunity to once again step up to the plate and continue to pay back some of that debt that, that, that my grandmother told me so many times I owe to my community. My name is Rocky Holcomb. I am VB Strong, and I thank you for your time and welcome any questions. Mr. Wood. So, Rocky, same question about time <coughs> management skills. Yes, sir. I, I understand the commitment to it, and, and I have made arrangements to, uh, to make sure that I'm, I'm at all meetings and everything on time. When I discussed this with my wife, and her reflection was back when I was uh, in Richmond, and she said, oh, shucks, you don't go to Richmond for 30 days? You got to stay here at home with us? So, uh, yes, time management won't be a problem. She, she will want me out of the house as much as she can just, get just me. Just for her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Yes. Moss. <coughs> Mr. Moss, in, 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 the, in the, uh, the, the case of brevity, without qualification or amplification, my answer to all three questions is yes, yes, and yes. Well, first of all, I want to thank you also for brevity. Thank you for your service yes, in the sir. General Assembly. Yes, sir. That, uh, and I assume that you would abstain on issues dealing with the Sheriff's Department. Yes, sir. All right, so thank you very much. Just with counsel and find out where I stand. Yes, sir. Great. Ms. Wilson and then Mr. Tower. Of course, we don't know where all the lines are going to be next year. Right. But would you be running for office? A absolutely. Represent we'll, we'll, Kempsville. Yes, ma'am. I, I would certainly, I would certainly seek to serve the Kempsville district, and uh, and I'm never opposed to being cleansed by the will of the voters. <laughs> <laughs> I know that experience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Tower. Thank you, Mr. Holcomb. Thank you for your service yes, sir. Uh, you. as well to the state and to the city. Yes, sir. Um, uh, by the way, Mr. make sure Mr. Oaksman knows his letter got to me Absolutely. today, and, and uh, I appreciate his taking the time to do that. Um, I have a question. I was noticing you, you were talking about the first resolution that you sponsored when you went to the General Assembly. Have you thought about what legislation you would uh, tr uh, are interested in taking up as soon as possible if you were appointed to this I, I haven't I haven't but I think there's going to be some important legislation coming forward with the as we come out of COVID and go into the post COVID and I think that uh, uh, I, I would like to explore, explore some more I know uh, Councilwoman uh, Wooten had talked about her Ignite program and I, I think we're going to have to do something to jumpstart the economy and get it moving forward so to say that I have something immediately no I don't okay thanks yes sir okay okay Miss Henley and then Miss Wooten well, the, uh, the sentence of, of yours that sort of jumped out at me was this one that says in your public safety uh, component that growing each year in public safety is the need to treat and deal with our mental health population. Yes, ma'am. I think we all learn lessons from the COVID experience. One of my lessons was that I can't imagine how anyone stays locked up in a jail and keeps their sanity. Yes, um, even, I mean, I know that a number of people go there because of a mental health problem, but I've become concerned that maybe we have some responsibility to keep people from developing a mental health problem. Uh, pro yes, and I, I hear that you have been very much involved in these kinds of things. Do you have any anything very quickly that you would like to say about this issue? Well, well with, with regard to this issue, and you're exactly right, and I think even minus COVID, when you when you take when you take souls that are free and lock them up it certainly plays with the mind and we do a lot of things at the sheriff's office during their incarceration there we have the GED program we have a substance abuse program we have recreation programs so we have programs to occupy their mind that, that can keep uh, that can keep them from going uh, looking at four walls and not having anything to do but it is a, it is a challenge every day and I will tell you uh, I got I got to tell you the men and women of the sheriff's office and the police department that serve in these environments my hat's off to them. It, it really is a tough job, and uh, and the steps we've made with CIT and our and our and our mental health treatment is uh, is really making a big difference. We still got a long ways to go. Yes, ma'am, we do. I think y'all have made a fantastic start. Yes, I think we're probably ahead of most cities in dealing with this, and y'all have done a great job. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Henley. Okay. Appreciate it. Miss Wooten. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Holcomb. Yes, and thank you for being here today. Yes, thank you for your service to our community. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question is, as it relates to the civilian review panel, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I'm, I'm not opposed to a civilian review panel. I think that we need to have the communication with the uh, with the, the parties involved, the police department, the sheriff's office. So I, I'm, I'm not opposed to a, the, the oversight panel. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Okay, Rocky, thanks a bunch. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, next up, Richard Jordan. <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Virginia Beach City Council. My name is Richard Jordan. And just to give a little bit of background on myself, I am 31 years old. I grew up in the Kimsville area. My parents' house that I grew up in is right off of Parliament Drive, close to Point of View Elementary. And I love growing up in the area. I grew up and I played to the Kimsville Pony Baseball League and had some really good memories and friends made from there. And after growing up here, I went away to university for four years. I went to Longwood University where I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts, cum laude, with a major in history, minor in political science, and a pre-law concentration. After graduating, I decided to come back to the area because I loved growing up here. I wanted to come back and when I came back, I started working in the manufacturing industry, started out as a quality engineer in a wire harness manufacturing company. And then from there, I went to start working at uh, a tier two automotive supplier that makes gearboxes for all the OEMs like Ford, GM, and Chrysler. And it was a high volume manufacturing place. They ran 24 hours a day with three shifts. But now currently, I work in Newport News for a company that makes some of the largest mining trucks in the world with 300 ton capacity. And that's just a little bit about myself. And now I'd like to explain why do I wish to serve on the Virginia Beach City Council. So I have a deep desire to want to help the council community. And I think the best way with my abilities and my capacity is I could represent their voices and their opinion on the city council. And I also, I believe with my you know, unique background working quality and manufacturing can provide unique input and viewpoints on certain issues. And I also have a long-term interest in the area. My wife and I, we decided to buy a home here in Kempsol last year. And it's because we want to raise a family here because it's such a wonderful area. It's got really good school systems. And you know, I want my future kids, our future kids, to have the best opportunities possible as naturally every parent wants. And now I kind of want to segue into and explain some parts of my letter of intent, which I'm sure you all saw in red, and starting with the three priorities, priorities identified by the Virginia Beach City Council, one being public safety, two being education, and a third with a stormwater slash sea uh, water rise. With education, I think it's something naturally that everybody in Virginia Beach prioritizes because naturally we all want the best for our kids, the best education, they give them the best opportunities later in life. And that's also why my wife and I decided to buy a home here because um, you know, we, it's a really good school system and the council does a good job supporting our education and our teachers. The second priority, public safety. Uh, as everybody knows, Virginia Beach, it's a, it's a tourist area, so naturally, not only do the people not living at the oceanfront, but living in the other districts, want to feel safe and secure for themselves and for their families. But it's also important to highlight public safety, so at the oceanfront, the tourists that come and support the economy, they're welcome to come back year after year and support businesses and our economy here. Then last but not least is the stormwater slash sea, sea rise. It's also a huge issue we face as a coastal city. And I think there's some good steps going forward to help uh, address this issue, such as the bond referendum for the flood mitigation program. And I'll come back to that topic later on at the end of my presentation. There was a few other items I also want to highlight and talk upon from my letter of intent, with one being the agricultural reserve program. I spoke on what my understanding of it was and my position on it in my letter. 
And my understanding of that program is, it's a program that's supposed to help individuals or groups uh, in the agricultural industry by providing them some capital to avoid feeling pressure to sell their land to like commercial developers and also help support the agricultural industry, which is one of the top three industries in Virginia Beach. I think it's a very good pr program because if some of that land were to start being sold and developed, it could compound the issue of flooding in our city. So I think it's a really good program and it's one that I definitely support. And one of the other programs that I wrote about in my letter of intent is the tourism and investment program. And my understanding of that program is that they have taxes placed on certain things like meals, hotels at the oceanfront, cigarettes, and a few other things to raise money to help reinvest and maintain the oceanfront area. I believe back in 2016 or 2018, the convention center was rebuilt with funds from this program. And I think that as long as the funds gained from this program are used for original intent of the program, I think it's a, a good one. And now before I dive into some things I really want to push if chosen, um, I'd like to answer three questions from Councilman John Moss. Um, the first question being, would I continue to support the city's appeal of the current voting system? And after doing some research, reading some of the judge's opinion, and look at the appeal of the city, and also based on Virginia General Assembly passing a law saying that by 2022, the voting system will have to change for our area. I would not continue to support it just based on the fact that by 2022, if my understanding of the Virginia General Assembly bill is correct, that it would have to change regardless. So I think based on that, if you already see like the end in sight where it has to change, then you can probably, we can probably start now and work towards a new system, whatever that might be. If my understanding is incorrect, I'll gladly take questions afterwards and maybe if I have a wrong understanding, I'll gladly hear the feedback on that. Then the second question posed by Councilman Moss was, will I continue to support the voter referendum for not supporting light rail essentially? And I would continue to support that voter referendum from 2016. I believe the Virginia Beach voters made their voice loud and clear that they, didn't, they did not want to continue and support that. So I would stand by what the voters said back at that time period. And then last, the third question was, would I continue to support Rudy Loop in precluding commercial development there? And that was a big thing that former Councilwoman Jessica Abbott was a big proponent of, and I would continue to support that. I think it's important to keep that land from being commercially developed because it could result in more flooding issues in our city. And with a little bit of time I have remaining, I'd like to focus on two key items that if I was chosen to fill the seat until the next special election that I would push for. So one key item that Jessica Abbott did a fantastic job supporting as a councilwoman was bringing bring awareness of the issue of flooding in our area. And I think this can continue to be supported by bringing more awareness to the ballot referendum in November for the flood mitigation bond program. I think it's a really good program I think it's important to continue to educate voters that are for this upcoming item. Let them know exactly what all projects are entailed in phase one, because it can really benefit the area, but to also understand the costs behind it and how the funds will be gained to pay for it. And then the last item that I'd like to push for, if chosen to be a city council interim member, would be to continue to support long-term business growth in our area. Um, you know, this area is a wonderful area, and to continue having high quality of life here, we need to continue supporting and bringing to the area businesses that can provide high paying jobs. You know, I was born and raised here, as I mentioned earlier, and a lot of my friends, after finishing high school or college, they didn't come back and stay in the area because they had a hard time finding work or employment that could provide for them or a family. So I think it's important to continue to try to attract businesses here as well as bring more attention to young adults graduating high school, that if you don't want to go to a four-year university and take on student loans and debt, that there are other op opportunities for you, such as going to a trade school or doing an apprenticeship. Some of the local manufacturers around here have excellent apprenticeship programs 
where you can go, learn to be working mechatronics, be a mechatronics technician, where you can learn to be a welder or electrician. And the whole time while you're in the program, they pay for your education for the classes at TCC, you get hands-on experience, and then once you finish the program, you have all those certifications and a job once you graduate. And so I think that'd be a, a very important thing we could try to highlight for the younger people in our area that choose or decide that maybe a four-year college route isn't right for them. And with that, I'm finished. I will gladly take any questions that you guys have for me. Any questions? Mr. Wood. Thank you. So you've heard me ask the same question before, so on time management. So my current work, I work from 6.30 in the morning to 3 p.m. for my company in Newport News. And as a supplier quality engineer, I do have to travel here and there to visit suppliers and to audit them and the processes. But generally, it's only three days a month that I have to travel for my current work. And it's usually I fly out Tuesday morning and then come back Thursday afternoon. But with other than that, I can definitely make it work. Um, the time commitment needed for this position. Thank you. OK. Uh, Ms. Henley. Have you ever been involved in a land use issue with your neighborhood? Uh, have you given much attention to the land use issues that we're dealing with, particularly short-term rentals? So I personally have been involved in that, but I have seen some of the recordings of the Virginia Beach City Council meetings where some of the meetings were very long, where citizens gave their feedback on uh, short-term rentals. And I know how the city is creating an option to have an overlay district where if a certain neighborhood wants to have STRs, they can apply for that. Um, but I think there's still some valid concerns in regards to that topic, mainly mentioned by some citizens. How do you monitor STRs? Like, how do you control illegal STRs? Um, so it's something that still is worth, is still worth looking at and discussing, I, I think, because there's a lot of concerned citizens as seen in some of the other council meetings that voice their concerns. Okay, anyone else? Ms. Wilson. If appointed, would you be running for real for election in 22? Yes, I would. Even if you had to move? You've had to move? Uh, yes. Because we don't know where the lines are going to be. They could be changing. That is fair. Yeah, uh, I guess we would. My wife and I would be thank willing to move. Okay. Ms. Wu. Good afternoon, Mr. Jordan, and, thank and thank you for availing yourself through this whole process. Um, what do you think is the most important leadership quality that you have that prepares you for such a position? I believe it's servant leadership because I'd be willing to provide any references if you'd like to speak to some of my previous or current coworkers. In the different departments that I've worked in, people always make comments to me saying that I'm really easy to work with and that I listen, I actually take their feedback back when it comes to making proposals or some process changes at the workplace. So I think willingness to work with other people and actually take in the feedback and then take it and implement it that works for multiple group members. I think that is probably one of my best leadership characteristics. Very good. And my other question um, that I've been asking all the candidates, what are your thoughts about the citizen review panel? So I think the citizens review panel is a good idea. I think it helps, I think it'd be a good way to bridge communication between concerned citizens and the police force in the area. I think it's also important to not have it be too restrictive of the police force that make, impedes them from their job or discourages them from doing their work. I know one of the big questions is that the councils or the, the board is trying to learn is the difference between investigative power and subpoena power. And I think subpoena power could possibly be a little bit too restrictive or enforcing or encroaching on the police force. So I think it's important to support them and to establish a good clear line of communication, but also not to restrict them or discourage them from doing their job. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Okay, at this point, Brian K. Uh, K. Matney. How are you doing today? Good to see you. Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor Wood, honorable members of City Council, good afternoon. Please let me begin by thanking you for your dedicated service to our city and the opportunity to interview with you today. I would also be remiss in not expressing as I commence my gratitude to Jessica Abbott for her commitment to Virginia Beach 
and I'm extending every encouraging wish to her as she addresses current medical needs. Save for my years as an undergraduate in college in Charlottesville and as a graduate student in Chapel Hill, I've been privileged to make Virginia Beach and Kempsville my home. Each day I'm honored to live on a piece of property purchased by my paternal grandfather some 80 years ago in the original Prince Anne County. That venue served as a wonderful pastoral retreat from the bustle of his business on Granby Street and remains the spot where I grew up and where my wife and I have raised two sons. I have thus witnessed firsthand the dramatic growth of our community as it has evolved from a decidedly rural flavor, including the farms of the Bellamy, Davis, Hudgens, and Knuckles families. From Woodstock School to Kemp's Landing and Kemp's Full High, I have reveled in the strong sense of community, pride, and friendships established during those formative years. Our conscious choice to raise our boys in Kemp's Hill was based, in largest measure, on those positive experiences. Our oldest Will, now a Virginia Tech alum, earned academic honors, patrolled the outfield with Rocky Holcomb's son Norman on Coach Sutton's chief baseball team, and graduated from Kempsville in 2016, three decades after I myself had. And our family is not alone in its allegiance to and affinity for Kempsville. I believe it speaks volumes about our community that of my 10 closest neighbors, fully half have returned home to live in Avalon Terrace. From that home site and in my personal and professional life, I would hope a spirit of service and a steadfast commitment to a bedrock, bedrock function of local government, namely education, has been made thoroughly manifest. My spouse, Catherine, a chemistry teacher at Tallwood High School since its very opening and beginning in 1992, and I have served our young people as educators for some six decades between us. Daily, we have enjoyed investing in, our, investing in the lives of young people as they cultivate knowledge which will help them contribute to our democracy and develop the skill sets which will serve employers and business leaders well. With the support and encouragement of many business leaders, I helped establish one of the Commonwealth's first two specialized governor's STEM academies in the Commonwealth. Designed in large measure based on the articulated needs of industry leaders in critical shortage areas involving science, technology, engineering, and math. My service as an appointee to your crime task force, including two terms as its vice chair, afforded us opportunity to offer recommendations to this august body, including several in support of community policing. I've also been privileged to share the accomplishments and innovation of our schools and our city with a variety of decision-making bodies. These range from our State Board of Education and the College Board Advisory in New York City to presidency of the 700-member Virginia Association of Secondary School Principals, which continues to lobby vigorously in Richmond on behalf of students across our Old Dominion. This also includes work as a two-time appointee to the Governor's Education Reform and Innovation Committee, whose recommendations have often become codified in law and have served as the foundation for our state's new profile of a graduate and its incumbent, more rigorous diploma requirements. I remain proud of our city's strong repute, including its regular and recent recognition as the safest city of our size in America. Our continuing investment in public safety, police and fire protection, and providing essential services through public utilities are yet another of the most fundamental purposes served by local government. Elemental two is a continuing investment in transportation, city infrastructure, and the economic development so essential in attracting business to the beach. While research continues to show that the attraction of business rests mightily on education, transportation, and manageable tax rates, I cannot help but think our ability to continue to offer such a wonderful quality of life will prove similarly powerful. Recent guests in our home could not have been more complimentary of our city's commitment to such resources. They were enamored of our recreation centers, our public libraries, a new skate park at Woodstock, the Kempsville Pony Baseball Fields at historic Providence Park, and multiple city-maintained open space access points to the Elizabeth River, two of which are right in my neighborhood. Catherine and I found these comments particularly meaningful, particularly heartening, because they came from individuals <coughs> living in Dallas and Raleigh and formerly of suburban Chicago. The fact that such services can be rendered all while maintaining responsible stewardship of public funds and perennial recognition as one of our nation's best-run, most livable, and most fiscally responsible cities enjoying a AAA bond rating is a testament to your leadership. Through our tourist investment program, our ability to leverage taxes paid by our visitors to enhance and provide for venues such as the Convention Center, the Sandler Center for the Performing Arts, Boardwalk Revitalization, among others, and in my estimation, will only continue to attract large and eager numbers to our home. Among the most notable challenges facing our city at this hour include, in my opinion, stormwater protection and the implementation of plans ensuring the integrity of private and personal property safe from flooding. 
We know this will be a long-term and expensive public safety endeavor, yet it is one so essential for the health and welfare of our city. I look forward to the insights of our residents as the $560 million bond referendum proposal is presented to voters this fall. <laughs> Overall management of growth is a similar challenge and I've benefited greatly from reading master strategic plans across our eight strategic growth areas here in the beach from Burton Station in Centerville to Newtown in Rosemont. Our continuing commitment to managing growth is also demonstrated, I do believe, in our agricultural reserve program, which allows us to pay deference to our rich agrarian history and provide citizens to a variety of living spaces. From residential neighborhoods and the vibe of town center to the oceanfront and the wider expanse desired by some in our city south of the Green Line, these options give residents, future residents, a host of wonderful choices in the setting of their home. As we enjoy the benefits of rising property values and a resulting expanding tax base, I'm also cognizant and mindful of how such a dynamic can squeeze out hardworking middle-class families. I thus believe we must continue to foster affordable housing options for our citizens, including particularly those who dedicate their professional lives to city service. The proactive pursuit of grants to help underwrite its efforts and the type of public-private partnerships recently forged in the Riverwalk community off Indian River Road can help our families achieve that great American dream. I remain impressed with the will willingness of such builders to work on a bit smaller margin of profit to ensure the more ready availability of such housing. Our steadfast commitment to competitive pay and benefits for our public servants, from our teachers to our police officers, and as set forth in the current fiscal year budget, will help us to continue to attract and retain the very best. Agreements with real estate firms and property owners for reduced rent and the like, particularly for recent college graduates, can also be a powerful incentive compelling standout individuals to locate to Virginia Beach. In fact, I have found such, initial, such an initial commitment can result in a lifetime of service to our city. The art of governing, I believe, rests in the ability and a plumb to balance the rights of the individual with the common good, the general welfare of the community as a whole. This delicate balance is notably demonstrated in the residential parking program, which enables us to continue to give the community and visitors access to our greatest natural amenity, while also ensuring that property rights are supported as South End homeowners seek personal and guest entry and egress to their homes during busy holiday seasons. My recent completion of leadership studies at Harvard and a year of study with the award-winning Richmond-based LEAD Virginia program, including exposure to the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce LEAD initiative, have benefited me enormously. In endeavors like these, I have seen some of the most civic-minded individuals in the Commonwealth come regularly together to address common challenges faced by each of the very distinct regions in Virginia, from the coal mines of Southwest Virginia and the dramatic growth areas in Northern Virginia to right here in Hampton Roads. Those discussions have led to a deeper appreciation that while we all have unique characteristics, each of our regions face very similar challenges. And they, like those alluded to earlier, include education, transportation, economic development, infrastructure maintenance, burgeoning college debt, and the ever, ever escalating cost of health care. Those sessions also help me better understand the importance of potential cooperative regional efforts where the power of large numbers and economies of scale might be enjoyed, and where locales are less apt to have to go it alone in facing what may appear to be at first plus intractable problems. I'm also of the persuasion that the candidate of choice to represent Kempsville must bring his or her insights, experiences, and knowledges to the table, of course. But most importantly of all, he or she must be committed to promoting the platform set forth by Ms. Abbott in her most recent reelection, where it was decidedly endorsed by almost 117,000 voters, as you know, some 63% of all ballots cast. I believe the appointee, as both delegate and trustee, owes that to those we serve. If appointed, I can assure you that I will be the most diligent of pupils, studying in great detail matters important to constituents. I will work hard in learning from you and addressing all the nuances of decision making. I would similarly pledge to lend the most listening of ears to others, including our voters, the very ones we are called upon to represent. Indeed, a variety, a wide variety of views must be considered as important actions are taken and critical decisions are rendered. I would also be a most enthusiastic and energetic of ambassadors for our city, for my hometown, seeking to share our accomplishments with Thank others. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wood. So thank you very much. Can you uh, respond to the uh, 
question I had for everybody else about time management. Yes, sir. Um, happy to uh, share that both of our boys are now grown. Um, one just finished Virginia Tech, as I mentioned. The other is halfway through. So Catherine and I, uh, married 29 years this past June 27th, are in the empty nest syndrome. Um, so I foresee uh, and I look forward to uh, additional time to devote to uh, service um, in uh, that type of situation of empty nest. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Ms. Wilson. Dr. Matinee, it's yes. nice to see you again. Nice We've to worked, see you. We have worked together when I was on the school board on, yes. on some different uh, committees, and I, I think like we did some much. good things together. Yes, we did. And thank you for your service to the children of our city for how many years? This will be year number 35. Yes, thank you. 30 in Virginia. You really helped us <laughs> make us a better place. Um, and, and as you know, we don't know what the districts are going to be, and, and the, the lines are not established, I guess yes. the best way to put it. Um, how would you, would you run for re-election or, I mean, you've been in your family's home for 80 years. I mean, that could be affected. Could you, would you mind responding? Um, I would and would just love the opportunity to, again, serve a place that the Matney family has called home for uh, eight decades, so yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Henley, then Mr. Moss. Didn't you interview once before I when did. we had an opening? I did. Yes, ma'am, 2013. Right. You were, I think, uh, at Lansdowne at that time. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. So you obviously have been looking at the city council for some time as a possibility. Why haven't you run? <laughs> well, I think in large measure that had a lot to do with my boys. Um, I wanted to be available to them. Uh, Catherine and I take great pride in our commitment to family. Um, I just saw this as a wonderful opportunity to fulfill a long-standing dream to serve um, with circumstances around me and surrounding me where, again, I didn't feel like I'd be giving any of my uh, familiar duty short shrift. Thank you. Mr. Moss. Well, you, you, thank you for being here today. You paid a great tribute to uh, Jessica Abbott, and you said you felt someone who was appointed had a responsibility to continue her legacy. So would you please respond to the three questions that I sent you? Yes, sir. Happy thank to you. respond yes uh, in each of the three, on each of the three. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll Appreciate it. it. I thank you all. Okay, at this point, doc, uh, Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond. The Honorable. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. How are you today? Great. Mayor Dyer, council members, city staff, fellow residents, good afternoon. I was saddened to hear about the illness of Councilwoman Abbott and wished her and sent her a card for smooth recovery. I also appreciate your tireless but honorable service to our community as council members. Again, my name is Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond founder and chairman of the Virginia African American Culture Center, retired distinguished professor emeritus from Norfolk State University, a graduate of the University of Virginia Sorensen's program for political leadership and former councilwoman for Kempsville. The reason for seeking this appointment is to continue the goals and aspiration of our diverse district. Key priorities on my agenda includes public safety, public education, workforce development, stormwater and flood mitigation, broadband access, clean energy with a focus on our delicate environment, open space, affordable housing, and one of the places I love to go out near Pongo, of course, to do with the ARP. And unfortunately, we're all facing the situation of mental health. So that has risen up as one of the priorities. I bring institutional knowledge, familiarity with its capital projects, and experience to enable a smooth transition. It was good to learn that even though I lost my re-election in 2016 election, I still won Kempsville District. 
As an educator with a passion for the arts, history, and culture, I'm very committed to civic engagement and actively listening to our citizens' concern. I believe in an action-oriented, hands-on approach that is inclusive, not only for the residents of Kempsville, but throughout our city. We truly have a diverse population in Kempsville of over 127,000, each with their traditions and history, which add value to our city and make our military families feel welcome. With a purpose-driven mindset, I learned early in life that what impacts one impacts all. With experience come acumen, courage, discernment, and wisdom. It does not matter who gets the credit if we can reach a compromise to accomplish the goals we have established in the city's comprehensive plans. Working in concert, we can grow our economy and be that city of choice for all cultures to enjoy a healthy lifestyle and thrive. I believe action speaks louder than words, and so I'm sharing examples of accomplishments during my tenure on council for Kempsville. I successfully negotiated $2.5 million for the historic Kempsville district overlay preservation and signage improvement. I collaborated with the developer to preserve the facade of the original Kempsville High School, thus retaining its historic registry. I oversaw the capital construction of elevating Kempsville Road to mitigate historic flooding and storm management issues. I worked with the Kempsville High School principals and the city public school leadership, council members, and other community and business stakeholders to establish the first business entrepreneur academy in our city public schools. I worked with the Department of Parks and Recreation to ensure our residents had a say in the design of the new Kempsville Recreation Center. This complex includes all the most modern amenities for intergenerational use, as well as an early childhood center. I work with the Filipino community and the Virginia Beach Cities Sisters Association, along with Councilman Woods, to install an anchor, which um, Senator Wagner so kindly helped us get to commemorate the new sister city relationship between the city of Alonco in the Philippines and the city of Virginia Beach. At that same time, we also put in the Kemp's Park, uh, along with the Kempsville Pony League Association, a youth baseball statue at Camp Lanning in memory of where the park used to be. And it was amazing seeing the one who actually posed for it and now is so tall. Um, Another area that I worked with was the African American communities listening and learning that they did not have a center or repository. So I kindly and carefully tapped Councilman Lois Jones from the Bayside District to locate an ideal plot of land to one day build the Virginia African American Cultural Center. In the rain, we went around until we found it. With land unanimously deeded by the city for this purpose, the VAACC is ready to begin its capital campaign. As city council liaison during that time for the arts and humanities and the public library, I negotiated and received increase in funding per capita for both departments. And I went through talking in uh, collaboration with the Asian American community to relocate India Fest from the scope in Norfolk to Virginia Beach. One part I'm also proud of is convincing the Office of Economic Development to establish an annual SWAM Business Day workshop, which brought small and diverse business owners and women together with MBE to assist these people in navigating and addressing barriers to win contracts. I also included, after hearing that they had a business incubator at Hampton University, I brought that vice president in, and together, talking with the then mayor, we were able to allocate from the city $50,000 for them to come over and work with our SWAM office. I'm so pleased that we now have our own SWAM office. As council liaison for human services and the community service board, I worked with the housing department and uh, participated in many heated town hall meetings 
to build our homeless shelter on Diamond Springs Road and the first human resource center on Wichita. I worked with Councilman Jones for the Bayside District to build a senior center apartment complex at Burton Station, which you know is an historically black neighborhood, and attended several of Councilwoman Barbara Henley from Princess Anne District town hall meetings, visiting the homes of those who were distressed about the flooding in Asheville Park. So I felt so good as president of the Virginia Beach Beautification Commission to go out there this past April and see in Asheville they have planted over 800 new trees to help mitigate the flooding. I collaborated with former Virginia Beach Mayor Will Sessoms to negotiate the establishment of an Achievable Dream Academy at SeaTac Elementary. And I worked also with Councilman Bobby Dyer, now mayor, and presented at his town hall civic engagement because his big word was get everyone civically engaged. And I told him about our emerging Kempsville Recreation Center. I served with Councilwoman Rosemary Wilson on the Historic Preservation Commission and visited her swimming program initiative for African American children. More importantly, I learned firsthand about our amazing first responders from then Councilman Jim Woods from the Haven District. I learned that EMS is the largest team of volunteer medical professors, providers in the nation. And we should pat our backs about that. I also served with him on the Hampton Roads Transit Commission to advocate for alternative transportation solution to move our workforce and tourists efficiently and effectively. Since council, I have not just been sitting, I've retired and I've continued working in different areas. For example, I've worked with the Elizabeth River Project and one of our candidates just mentioned about off Providence Road, that land and that new area, which I helped negotiate with the city for them. Um, also, I've worked with the uh, College Affordability Act policy. So sometimes I've been in Richmond trying to get that because we need a viable workforce. I'm currently secretary for the Virginia, for the Vibes Created District out near the ocean front. And I also work with the Mayor's African American Round Table. Together with our different leadership styles, we can move things forward. I enjoy working with other minority groups, including Hispanic, Filipinos, Asian Americans, Chinese, Jewish, Germans, Native American, African Americans, as well as our veterans. To me, no one is a stranger. <coughs> this personal quality has served me well, resulting in being selected by Mayor Dyer to chair his idea commission. I'm willing and ready to serve as your councilwoman and would appreciate your vote. And thank I you. thank you. Mr. Wood. I didn't raise my hand, but okay. Mm -hmm. So the... Um... <laughs> it was automatic. I couldn't help you. Telepathy. So the, the, uh, the question on time management that I asked everybody. Yes, that's important. If you heard me, I did mention I am retired. Yeah. And I chair the Virginia African American Culture Center, but we now have hired staff that do our daily uh, transaction and programmatic activities. The only other two boards I had to step down from several of them is the Virginia Beach Beautification Commission. We meet quarterly. And the other one that um, those are the two I am involved with is the new Mayor's Idea Commission. Thank you. So I have the time Thank you. to put hey, to Ms. This. Henley and then Ms. Wooten. Yes, Ms. Wooten. Oh, uh, Amelia. So oh. we don't miss it again this year. Put Fourth of July on your calendar for next year to come back and play at the Senior Center for us. She plays for us every year and does a great yeah. job. Every plays year. Plays the piano. <laughs> plays the piano. I just want to yeah, make that's sure one of my we do what she skills. plays. I do play the piano and enjoy it. And the seniors, we all sing and have a wonderful time. I look forward to that. Thank you. Well, if you were to come back on City Council, is there one thing that you didn't get to do, that you didn't get to finish, that you want to do now as your first thing yes, that you would want to Yes, I would like on? to pick up, because I was at the last uh, Kempsville Historic CAC meeting. And they're trying to regroup because from when I was there and there were about 35 strong, there were about eight or nine. But they are ready to hit the ground running again. We're working on putting up the historic signage 
at the historic park and also looking at the flooding because even though we've got that part, there's still much more work to do. So I'm ready. I told them I'm willing and ready to help move those projects. The other thing is to support the ARP. That is very important to me to see that we have gained 10,000 acres and we will move forward to get the other 20,000 acres. Thank you. Ms. Wilkerson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. Ross Hammond. Yeah. Thank you very much for your service to um, the city of Virginia Beach and serving on city council and your continued service in the community. My question it relates to the citizens review panel. Could you share your thoughts? Well, after researching, because as an educator, I love to research paperwork. Um, I noticed that one of the things that now have that court of Virginia that has come in, which, which was done in July 1st, and about the police citizen review panel, which you have now changed to board. Um, there have been 127 complaints against the police from 2020 to 2021. But one of the things this specific ask is for no subpoena powers. I follow some of what you all have done by inviting uh, Chief Nuttigat in and some others in to speak to you all about situations. You all even invited the Virginia Beach Police Supervisors, the Benevolent Group, and the Fraternal Order of Police. They're all still recommending no subpoena power unless court authorization. They also recommended no binding discipline recommendation. And the third thing they recommended for this board is they should be required to go through specific training, to go through understanding the policies and procedures, and attend the Citizens Police Academy to understand the use of force. But in every situation, there are exceptions. So I like what you did last night, and I plan to go to the next one where you had the citizens' input, because that's important for moving forward, because none of our cities are the same. So I thank you for the ongoing work that you're doing, and hopefully once you see what Atlanta, Georgia, their video, and some of the other cities, you all can come to an informed decision. Thank you for moving this forward. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Okay, uh, Ms. Wilson and then Mr. Tower. I mean, it's nice to see you again. And Good to see you, my as friend. As you know, it was quite a pleasure to serve with you when you were on the council. Yeah. Um, and all That's the one thing activities like. that we did. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, she does play the piano very well because we had experience with that too. Thank you. Um, as you know, we don't know where the lines are going to shift and be. Um, with that's going to be up to the judge. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question to you is, would you run again? And would you also run if you had to move? Well, if I had to move and not be in Kempsville, that would be something I would look at because I haven't been a person to jump ship and move because of position. Yeah, that even happened when my friend back there, a uh, former delegate, <coughs> Rocky Holcomb, people came straight and asked, will you run, will you run? I said, no, he's in a different section. That would mean I will have to move my entire family, my mother, and so forth. And I'm not a person to do that. But if it's in the same area, I'm willing, I'm ready. My mother transitioned in 2019. In 2020, I lost a veteran that's like my son. It was in Texas during that time. Yeah, I so I was in no mind or spirit to move this forward. But now I'm up and I'm ready. Thank you. Yes. And I remember that sad time for you. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Tower. Uh, Dr. Ross Hammond, I, I think Ms. Henley and others have probably asked the questions that I would have asked, but I just want to thank you for your service to the city yes. and comment on, um, I think it is just uh, a part of your remarkable purpose-driven life that when you lost an election, although as you noted, you won the Kempsville District, when you lost an election, your verve and enthusiasm for serving the city didn't miss a beat and you continued, uh, continued to be so deeply engaged and uh, I think you deserve special 
a commendation for that and thanks. And and I, I, I lead that, uh, us in doing that. And uh, it's a real pleasure to see you up here. And I, pre I appreciate so much your willingness to put your name forward again for City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moss. Well, first of all, I'd like to say the Honorable Amelia Ross Hamlin. I often think we fail to do the protocol courtesy of recognizing past members of this body, and I would want to extend that courtesy to you. I thank uh, you. But I would like to have the three questions that I asked to be answered. One was on the position of the light rail, mm -hmm. and would you honor the judgment of the voters until such time as it was changed? Oh, my answer, and one of the reasons you saw where I didn't <clears throat> respond at that time, because I felt I needed, as a researcher, to be given the time, just like you did, to review every aspect of that, and then do a data analysis. I learned that from you. And then finally, <laughs> being able to... <laughs> Back at you, John. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, but I can count 63% of the voters' vote. I'm not asking the court decision question. I'm asking the light rail decision. Would you honor the judgment of well, the voters? Not my judgment, but right. the voter's judgment. Well, if you really wanted to look at the light rail situation, I serve on the Hampton Roads Transit. I'm chair of the planning and new starts, and nothing about light rail has come back to that commission. So I will make sure to let you have that paperwork so that way you won't need to ask the question again. Well, well I, got, I didn't get an answer, but that's, we'll move on. Uh, relative to the issue of developing Rudy Loop, would you continue to support Mrs. Jessica Abbott's position, which she was adamant about, preserving Rudy Loop from commercial development? Again, all of those that you sent us, I ask, humbly ask you to give me the opportunity to continue my research and be ready after my data analysis to give you an answer that will be from an informed decision for our citizens and well, what is best. I take your Thank answer you. B, you will not honor the position of Jessica Abbott. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all, it's good to see you and I've enjoyed working with you before and I'm ready if I'm so selected to do so. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You got it. All right. <clears throat> Okay, at this point, uh, we're going to also bring forward Mr. Burr, uh, Burr, uh, Brent Werlein. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor, members of Council, for this opportunity to present to you today. And I hope to express to you why I think I should be appointed and my understanding of the issues that are at hand for this body. A little about me, I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin where we measure distance by time, not by miles. <laughs> Sorry, a little too loud. Yes, sir, ma'am. I went to college at another university in Wisconsin, a small university that was about an hour away from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. While I was attending that university, I decided to join the United States Air National Guard and pursue a career in that. As I was going through the Air National Guard, I finished my degree in environmental engineering and it was in December 2009, which was not a very good time to graduate college. So during that time, I got a government contract job at Whiteman Air Force Base and moved to Missouri. As I was doing my job there, I applied to a job at this, for the city of Lee Summit, Missouri, which is a, another small town just outside of Kansas City. While I was there, I worked for Public Works, working on neighborhood street revitalization and bringing the city up to code with ADA standards for curb ramps. While I was there, I learned different ways to fund different projects. Currently, I'm employed by the Virginia Beach Public Utilities as the head fog program manager, and I work on other projects like find and fix projects and coordination projects with other <coughs> departments. I also serve on the Ask HR Green's fog subcommittee in which we join together to come up with ways to educate the public, work on regional issues that have come up, as well as work as a team to come together with decisions that would help the citizens with education. So why did I apply for this vacancy? A lot of it has to do with the Air Force core values that I was instilled with. 
They are integrity, service before self, and excellence in all I do. Under integrity, I always want to do the right thing and be held accountable for what I do. And by doing this, I want to represent the Kempsville residents and their concerns, even if they do differ from my own. I also believe that people should have the voice in this vacancy. I also believe that uh, the appointed member should not have to run during the next election, and I would not run during the election. Service before self, I'm always looking for ways to su support my community and the city that I chose to move across country to come work for. I also want to continue to help bring the voice to the council, to the council of the 120,000 Kempsville residents that is the, that council member Abbott was representing. And in excellence in all I do, I always strive to continually improve myself and my community. To understand Kempsville, I, I understand Kempsville as the way it is set up currently structured. There's 120,000 plus residents. There are two recreation centers within Kempsville, one library, two skate parks, one of them being the newly minted Woodstock Park, a golf course, and of course the historic Kempsville Overlay District. My understanding of the issues that are forefront of this council are of flooding. Under flooding, there is the looking of sea level rise, increased flooding due to storm frequency, as well as you as a body approving the uh, ref bond referendum question for this fall for $567.5 million from the taxpayers. This referendum is a good referendum while not having a specific project in the Kempsville Pro area, it will help the city as a whole and that by helping the city as a whole, it will help the Kempsville residents. Under public safety, there's always a perceived increase in violence and crime. And listening to the citizens on this perceived violence and inc crime increase is how I would like to serve them and also listen to the officers as well to find out what is truly going on in our community. Under education, funding is always the number one priority that everybody has for education, paying our teachers and paying their staff. I understand that there is a school board that is duly elected that creates their own budget that they bring to this council for approval. I also understand that council member Abbott was a very big proponent of urban agriculture. This is something I would support and continue to move forward with her and the rest of the council. I also understand affordable housing is a major issue in this city. In this city, we have the military that has BAH, which helps kind of set what the little, the minimum pay would be for rental. And then we also have STRs, which affect our affordable housing. Just yesterday, I had a new neighbor move into my uh, next door house, and she said that she had to move away from the uh, oceanfront district after 11 years because the, the place that she was renting decided to change to a short-term rental. To go on to uh, council member, uh, Moss's question, question number one, if I would uh, follow the council with the Voting Rights Act, and I said, I said yes, I would continue with the appeal, and I also understand that there is the option for the 731 or the 101 system that is coming forth to this council. On August 12th, the census data is supposed to be released so we should know what our population looks like around here. And the final toolkit to help redistricting the uh, federal districts is supposed to be available September 30th. And there might be a possibility that maybe we could jump on that toolkit to help the residents to come up with their own districts and possibly submit to this council. For question number two, uh, Mr. Moss asked about the voters' de decision to not go with light rail. I would follow through with that their decision even though that wasn't what I personally wanted I would continue to support that they do not want light rail and then I would continue to support Abbott's motion of the trailways to bikeways paths and continue to support the grant for the building of the trail from the Newtown light rail station to town center for question number three it was asked if we would uh, support not developing the Rudy loop yes I would continue to support not developing the Rudy loop and think open spaces open spaces are a much needed commodity in this city and would really like to see that area if it was to be turned into a park turned into a larger accessible park with the Gromit Island Park right there so that way it's really truly a park for everybody to come to now there might be some potential concerns with a city employee being on council which council may have or the citizens may have as a city employee if I was appointed I would recuse myself from public utility projects public utilities funding decisions and staff pay and benefits decisions. 
And with that, I open it up to you, Council. Thank you. Mr. Wood. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, same question I asked everybody else about time management. Yes, so time management, I have plenty of leave saved up, so on Tuesdays if I have to take leave, I can take leave, and then my nights and weekends are completely open. Okay, thanks. Okay, Mr. Okay. Moss. Uh, I'm very and Ms. Wood. In intrigued and admiring about your forthrightness saying that you would not seek the position and you just, which kind of lines up with service to without ambition and that's not a bad thing nor is willingness to run a bad thing but I, I appreciate your honesty about that but I am interested how you segment in your own self and how do you think you would approach the issues that you talked about of being because we've had city employees on here before so I have that experience so I'm interested in how you would somehow divorce yourself from the appearance of conflict which is the military standard mm -hmm. how do you how are you how are you going to compartmentalize that as you approach the job I, i'd be interested in your thoughts so the way i would compartmentalize it would be during the eight to five work day that i am city staff city employee on days if council is meeting i would take leave and then basically transition into the role of being a council member then at night if people have questions it's basically when they're talking to me explaining to them i'm talking to you as this as a council member or if I'm talking to you as city staff and making that definitive line when we start communication where I'm at. When you talk, if I could just for a moment, thank this, I think this is an important area to discuss. It isn't just abstaining. Your boss in your normal job is now your employee in this job. Correct. And, when I'm, and, I, and, I, and I can tell you how difficult that might be. But but, I, but, it's, but it's a serious topic relative to what this body has to do. So when I talk about compartmentalizing, how, how are you and your, you obviously thought about it, so I'm just asking to share your thoughts of how you then communicate with the, the manager when he's also your boss. That is, a, I'm, I'm having trouble with that, but you probably can allay my fears. So currently the uh, amount of distance between me and the city manager and the chain of command there are at least four steps before it ever gets to the city manager. So everything, you know, I'm all the chain of command. Bring it down, then work it back up. If it was an issue that was to come up that was a council issue, I would directly work with the city manager to bring it up and then have it work its way down. I would not, as I'm in staff, work in trying to get the issues created that way. It would be talking directly to the city manager and letting him disseminate it down to bring it back up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Ms. Wu. Good afternoon, Mr. Rowland. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your service to the city of Virginia Beach. Um, thank you for your presentation as well. Uh, my question is just, um, as it relates to this position, what were, would be some of the things that you would do, uh, first off, um, in becoming uh, appointed to that position? What were your first, I guess, key areas that you will focus on? My key areas that I'd focus on is reaching out to all the civic leagues to find out what their positions and what matters to them. Because I don't have all the knowledge of what Ms. Abbott was working for and try, striving for, I would be reaching out to the constituents and finding out what are their issues that they want addressed. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Bullertree. Thank you, Mr. Werlein. I, I don't have any questions for you. I just have some general comments I'd like to say to the, all of the applicants. So if anyone else has any questions. Okay, no, we're good. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've had the great privilege of being on both sides of this process. And as such, I think because of that, um, I decided that the best move for me was to listen and listen very carefully to uh, the nine individuals who were here before us and I did listen and I did listen carefully and I really want to begin by thanking each of you for making the time to complete the application um, I know that's an exhaustive process to answer all the questions and to consider the intricacies of the questions that were asked in the application process itself and then um, to consider the intricacies of the financial disclosure document which can be quite cumbersome as well so and those are just a few of the steps in this process and so I just want to tip my hat to each of you for completing that process and also and I think um, really principally thank you for your um, past and future service to our to our city um, what I witnessed here today was really outstanding and that was nine individuals who love Virginia Beach and care about Virginia Beach um, really 
kick around some important ideas about the future of our city. And I know that uh, we're going to be in good, uh, we're going to be in very good, um, in a very good place no matter who is selected from this group of, of people. So I just want to um, explain my um, quietness this afternoon and also just thank each of you for, um, for everything that you've done for our city and for being here today. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Moss. I just want to make one remark because I know a lot of people in the public watching is this council isn't <coughs> going to be in charge of the redistricting, not drawing the maps, not picking who draws the maps, and not the timeline on which the maps are being drawn. As it currently stands, that is the total job of Federal District Raymond Jackson, and we are just as passively watching as you are. So I want all of you to realize we are not working it because it's not a job we can work or we would be acting. So I just want people to know that your council is doing what they can Excuse do. Excuse me. But it is Judge Jackson that is running that show. But we are appealing. We are not appealing the 10 districts. We are appealing the underlying reasoning of the ruling, not the 10 districts. And that's also too important to know that the council has supported the 10 district system. We are just appealing the rationale of his ruling, not the conclusion of the ruling. Thank you. Good. Anyone else? I would like to thank all the candidates for stepping forward. A stellar group that really is reflective of the tenacity and just resolve and the commitment of the people of Virginia Beach. It's certainly going to uh, present a dilemma to select one. But if I could say there's an opportunity, and I think uh, by watching the body language of my colleagues, I think there was a lot, a lot of folks are impressed at this dais with the groups. and. Just a reminder, there are a plethora of opportunities, you know, for boards and commissions and other ways you can do it and other elections coming forward. But once again, I thank you for the spirit of positivity and commitment. Thank you all very much. Okay, at this point, the chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session. So moved. Uh, wait a minute, i got to read the whole thing. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm with you, Rosemary. I was right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, the city attorney makes me do it. And Amanda, too. Oh, so, yeah. and then it's so moved. Okay, you got it. <laughs> the chair will uh, entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions from the open meeting allowed by Section 2.23711A, Code of Virginia, as amended for the following purposes. Publicly held property, discussion or considerations of acquisition of real property for public purpose or of this disposition of publicly held property where discussions in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position of negotiation strategy of the public body pursuant to section 2.23711A3, Beach District, and another item in the Beach District. <laughs> public contract, uh, discussion of the award of public contract involving the expenditure of public funds and discussions for the terms of the scope as such, uh, a, a scope as such uh, contract where the discussion in open session would adversely affect the bargaining power of negotiation strategy of the public body pursuant to section 2.23711A29, dome site slash Atlantic Park development, Pembroke, TIF slash SSD. And finally, uh, personnel matters, discussions, considerations, or interview of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, Demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the public body pursuant to Section 2.23711A1, and that's a council appointments, uh, council boards, commissions, committees, authorities, agencies, and appointees, and uh, city council, Kempsville seat. Now, do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Wilson. Oh, motion and a second. The vote's open. I vote of nine to zero. Enter into closed session. Okay, we are recessed into executive. Thank you all for your participation. Really appreciate it.
going to uh, reconvene, and I'm going to ask for a certification of the closed session. So move. Second. Second. Okay, vote's open. By a vote of nine to zero, you've certified the closed session to be in accordance with a motion to recess. Okay, great. Okay, Mr. Doheny, we have some uh, manager's briefings. Sorry, Mayor, I need you to adjourn this uh, oh. special session and then start the workshop, please. Okay, we're going to adjourn this particular Thank session. Thank you. And we will start.